What's up, everybody? Brett here, back today playing some more of our Battle Brothers Blazing Deserts Gladiator DLC run. It's day 16, it's in the morning. And we've got a lot of stuff to talk about, we got a lot of stuff to do today. But I think we're going to start it off with a fun arena. We're going to at least try it and see what we can do. Just a quick recap of the last episode. We were able to pick up our first camp follower. So guys, let me know before I even do anything. I raised the audio just a bit, the in-game audio. Uh, I felt like it wasn't coming through. Now, I've, I've done this a lot in the past where I've like raised it what looks to be like 5%, but it makes it 100% louder. So if you find that the in-game audio for this episode is just a little bit too loud, perhaps unbearably so, um, let me know. I did some testing beforehand, of course. It sounded fine, but sometimes it gets on YouTube and it's totally different. Like 10% louder can make a big difference to whether or not something's comfortable to listen to or very uncomfortable. So just let me know, please, in the comment section if the audio sounds good to you guys. Um, we picked up the cartographer who's going to pay us every time we discover stuff. Uh, locations, that is. So we're going to attempt to do that today and see how this mechanic works. I also wanted to run a quick experiment just to, you know, um, I want to say edify myself. I don't know if that's the way you can use that. Uh, for my own edification, I wanted to see if our renown goes up whenever we win an arena battle. So just take note, we're at 568 right now. So whenever we go to do the arena, hopefully we win, um, we will check back and see if our renown did indeed go up. So let's see, three of our men against two nomads will accept. We should be able to beat two nomads, really no problem. Um, we've got one injury here on Brown. But it's a it's a hand injury, which isn't like the worst. It'll lower his melee skill by 20%, which on him kind of sucks because it drops him down to 50. We could almost consider bringing in like Oz. I mean, that wouldn't be terrible. We could take all of his, like, great gear and put it on someone else. It's not a bad strat, to be honest. Hmm. I'm just kind of thinking out loud, guys. At some point, Oz is going to be good enough to get in. Someone told me that he will indeed get capped out at level 7 here, but I'm not 100% sure. One person told me that. We'll see whether or not that is indeed the case. Maybe, maybe in today's episode, he'll get to that level. Did I give everyone a collar while I was talking? I sure did. Alright guys, let's get it done. The crowd roars as the glorious three's men step into the pit. One would be dumb to confuse excitement for desire. For as soon as the applause ends, there's a smattering of empty beer mugs and rotten tomatoes and the general giggling delight of those watching the matter. You wonder if the glorious three's men are really best spent here, but then think hard on the gold and glory to be won, and that at the end of the day these mongrels in the stands will go home to their shit lives. And you'll be home to your shit life as well. But at least your pockets will be a bit deeper. Gotta love it, y'all. Oh, so they're giving me these guys to fight. Sure. Let's go for this around here. That is pretty brutal. I was gonna say, is he gonna go for a round swing and rips hitting his own guy? And he did. We only took one shot there. So, a lot of you guys, I just want to say I appreciate this right off the bat. Uh, Y'all are giving me some build suggestions for the Coddle. I think is what I was told is how you pronounce it. The Coddle Dagger. More of a K sound than like the QU sound I was trying to get in. Um, but there is apparently some really good stuff you can do. And it has to do with the synergy from Kane's... Um, his trait, his unique gladiator trait, which we can go back and look over. And it's it's basically the ability to allow him to attack five, maybe even as many as six times in a single round. Assuming, of course, he has the fatigue and other things. We picked up a gladiator harness. That's awesome. Okay, let's let's read this first and then we'll go back into that. The arena master is waiting for you. That was a mighty fine show, Crownling. Would not mind it in the slightest if you came back again. The arena will be closed. So we're going to pick up this gladiator harness. Killed it. The fight over, you find a few women sauntering upon you and the gladiators. They are practically swooning, faces blushed, and the men take special care of them. A little tired yourself, you have one of the fans help you count inventory. We are the best. Okay. So that is just an attachment, correct? No, it's the entire set of armor. Awesome. I'm pretty stoked about that. Let's hook him up with that. Now we have a Linothorax as a backup piece. 
8 fatigue on that, 7 fatigue on that. This is such good armor. I'm happy to have it. Very cool. Man, that made it so worth it. And we also made like, I don't know, 750 crowns, something like that. I wasn't really looking. So here's the deal. Like, let's look at um Kane here. Kane has glorious quickness. Upon killing an enemy on their turn, this character immediately gains one action point. So if you can set up lots and lots of kills and you pair that with um not killing frenzy, with with berserk. Once per turn upon killing an enemy, four action points are immediately gained. So he's going to kill someone and gain five action points. With those five action points, he can also do another stab, right? Perhaps potentially getting another kill. But let's also go to Dagger Mastery. Builds up less fatigue. That's great. But now it reduces it by an action point to allow for an additional attack. So there's definitely some merit to keeping Kane as a dagger user and I think I'm convinced I think this is the the way I think this is the way for sure um whether or not he goes for dodge and nimble which I've been told has been changed it's just initiative is a is a resource that kind of gets messed up over time as fatigue drops so in longer battles these types of builds become worse and when I say longer battles I'm talking like fighting the emperor right you don't want to be have your entire build be relying upon your your men's fatigue unless of course you're gonna go for recover as well so there's a there's a whole separate kit that goes along with this and we're coming to the point where we're gonna to have to choose right are we a nimble um, dodge bro uh, also Colossus works really well in that brawny works fairly well as well to kind of synergize with those builds or are we just a battle forged uh, going in heavy type of bro and I'm not convinced yet of that but if we're going to stick with daggers, it does make sense to go dodge into nimble. Uh, and that's stuff that, you know, it's higher level stuff. We'll talk about that later as we get into it. For now, the only contract we have available to us, and we're going to need to buy some supplies here, is to travel on a trading caravan to a new place that's three days away, which in this game is almost as far as you can go. I think it's four days might be the longest travel. Um, but three days is like it'll bring us over here. Or over here or something like we're going far away which I don't hate because it's gonna give me a way to explore the map more but if we're going all the way up which is what I think we are and instead of maybe going all the way east if I knew I was going to the east I would do it but if we end up stranded in the north I don't want that I want to hang out in the south for as long as possible so with that being said I want to explore to the west here because I feel like the west is a dead end I was thinking that there might be some civilization over here, another city-state. But, I see this water here, and I'm starting to think that maybe there's a big chunk of this that's just water. And we'll see whether or not this is a lake or, or whatever, but... At this point, that's what it's looking like, and I would love to catch these hyenas. We've only fought them once. They struck me as just kind of stronger versions of basic direwolves. Yep, not fighting necrosavants, that's, that's for sure. This is okay, I'm happy to chase here. And we'll immediately get another chance to engage three more. Alright, let's put some pain on them. Or, you know, let's, <laughs> let's do that. That'll work. Hmm. I love this, like, improved pathing. It, like, it understands that I don't want to walk into its zone of control. I've had problems with that in the past. Alright, here we go. We got one. I'll take it. And down he goes. I can footwork into this position. Just kind of preemptively freeing us up. Wow. Three attacks. They didn't apply overwhelm, which is good. As the frenzy dire wolves tend to do. And what this also did was free up my line of sight for my archer. So there was a lot of reason to do that. And of course the battle is currently over in the last episode too we finally got our banner and it looks pretty good and for our trouble we're getting more of this acidic saliva I'm not gonna complain I don't know exactly what this is used for yet but it's also has a pretty high value okay same value actually as the fur so it's just I'm thinking like if it's something that I'm gonna eventually want to sell anyway maybe it's for a crafting it's a crafting ingredient for a a thing that I don't really want to make or spend money at this point this early in the game to make I could consider selling it 
Alright. Good hits. Armor's gone. I like it. Yeah, we'll step in here. Step in there. Can't shoot. I totally forgot to buy ammunition, by the way. Which is why he doesn't have... See, his, his gun... His gun. His, like, uh... Little firecrackers all spent. I totally forgot. It's okay. Obviously, I'd like to have the opportunity to use this. And our quivers are going to be a little light. Hyenas are not going to be the, the enemy that's going to refill our quivers for us. But that was a little bit of a mistake. Okay, he's done. Go for the stab there. It's irrelevant whether or not we stab him. They break really easily. Obviously, they're in low numbers. Three misses. I'll take it. You know, let's move over here. Then let's uh, pull this out. Step in. Down they go. And two more pelts. I feel like three of these furs is probably enough if we find a taxidermist to make what we want to make. I don't know what other ingredients we might need. Oh my god, are we going to get Battle Brother? Or, yeah. You notice the mutt a few miles back, and a few miles forward he's still there, bobbing and slinking in and out of sight. A mongrel such as he doesn't follow a band of dangerous men for no reason. Maybe someone is feeding it? We could chase him away, put him down, or try and get the mascot. This can go wrong, though. Damn! Let's see, okay. A rugged dog such as he would make for a great mascot. The little mutt could definitely boost morale. If you order Brown the Bear to feed it, and uh, feed it some food in hopes that it'll tag along. He goes out with a scrap of leftovers and crouches down. Good dog. The mongrel sniffs the food, then chomps down on it, and the mercenary's hand along with it. The brother jumps back, nestling his arm into his chest as though he might lose it otherwise. The dog, on the other hand, swallows the scrap and then runs off. Damn, he would have fit in. I've had pretty good luck with those in the past. And an injury like that's not the end of the world. We have we have medicine. Yeah, I'm starting to feel like maybe we won't find a city state here. I think we might have gotten to the edge of the edge of the world. But that's all we're checking, you know. Let's speed this up, of course. Uh, let's go to the tip. Sometimes it's hard to see. There could be land right here, and you could actually physically cross it if you just kind of finish checking it out. All right, and we get a chance to do another ambition, so let's see. Brothers, the glorious three must show the world we are forged of a hotter fire than other mercenary bands. As our reputation grows, so will the influx of crowns to our coffers. Let us forge a path to greatness. Okay. We fight well, but we need to get a sergeant. Yeah, we're going to do this right away. We're going to get it, like, right now. A dozen men will take us a bit of time. Get rich under the blazing sun. Travel south, visit the southern city-states, and find employment there. Take on and complete contracts for the ruling elite. That seems pretty easy as well. Or to earn a fortune. Buy and sell 25 items of trading goods. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do this because we already have a sergeant in mind. It's going to be Brown. He has naturally high resolve. We're going to give him the sash. But this is good, guys. We have explored sort of our boundaries. We know not to waste time here looking for another city-state. And we also know that our city-states are all to the east now, so we have a clear direction. You were unaware at first about assigning Brown to this important task, for he was as committed to revelry and carousing as any other man. But Brown takes to his duties with a zeal that is at first admirable, and later worrying. Scoffing at dawn at the rising hour of the cowardly and infirm, Brown decides that everyone must start the day much earlier. He runs the men through the usual sparring routines and checks their equipment for splits and wear. But to such light work, he adds strict rules about setting up and breaking camp. Formation drills, lessons on flanking, forced marches with stones in their packs, I've done that, and a detailed punishment regime for anyone who dares fall behind. Words such as backbreaking, cruel, flint-hearted, and merciless, as well as dozens of saltier epithets, ring in the air whenever Brown is safely out of earshot. Though never when he is sleeping, for the brothers have learned that Brown the Bear never truly sleeps. That was worth it. This whole name, that was worth it for that one reading there. This will help us greatly. So everyone's happy now. We have a sergeant. Brown is going to get his sash, which is further going to boost his morale by 10. 
a sash worn by the company sergeant, your second in command on the battlefield. Uh, don't ever sell this. It's pretty dumb. But it, it also changes him visually. It makes him look even cooler. So, yeah, nailed it. Let's keep on going, guys. And now whenever he uses his ability, Rally the Troops, which, for those of you who don't know, maybe, is the, the condition for finishing that ambition, it'll be more effective. The more effect, the higher his resolve, the more effective his rally is. In case our men ever break, he can call them back, put them back to task. Interesting little area here. Okay, nothing. Oh, wait, we've got islands. We have islands. We have food for two days. Ugh, I just want to discover the island. We have an island with mountains. Damn. Okay. I mean, this is cool. It looks like a whole other region. It has its own name. There may be a city-state over there. Good to know. Let's... Let's try and discover this little like area of Fog of War just to, to clear it. Alright, yet another chance. What are we going to do now? I forgot to check the Renown after the arena. Oh, man. Because we've done one of these, our Renown, I think, is boosted. So our experiment has been thrown off. Damn it. Defeat five packs of beasts in battle. We just did two of those. I wish I had known that ahead of time. This should be easy to do. Eight more contracts, get up to 12 men. I think we just need to do a contract for the uh, the southern city-states. They might even have something new in the time that we've been gone. Go back into fast-forward. Yeah, weird, nothing here. So yeah, now I'm not convinced there may be a city-state here. This hasn't opened up yet, so we're not at 750. We're at 699. So yeah, we've done battles and stuff, so it's going to throw off the numbers. But I'll try and remember to check next time. There's so much stuff I wanted to tell you guys. I had a I had a pretty good weekend also, if you're interested in hearing about some personal stuff. I had some buddies come stay with me some and a new friend as well. And we hung out. We did a lot of cool stuff. This morning, though, my friend who's very tech savvy, he, uh, he helped me kind of fix some of my recording stuff. Apparently, I was recording in like the wrong hertz for my monitor. He helped me, like, adjust the vibrancy on my... I have, like, a split screen set up. And just, like, just little things like that that I just don't ever think of because I'm not a, a super tech guy. Um, I was the kid who liked to read books, not necessarily, like, mess with computers and stuff. And nowadays, nobody gives a damn about books. And I wish I was a little more computer literate, so... Anyway, I hope the audio sounds better because we tweaked that as well. And we also tweaked some stuff in OBS, so... This is not really the game to like benchmark it. We were testing with some other games that are really like graphically heavy, like uh, Total War Warhammer 2 and Grounded, which is something I'd like to make a series on one day. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Let me get back to this. I'll read this for you guys. Risil Ibn Nusa, the master astrologer, is partly sitting on a throne of silken cushions and partly on the bodies of a harem of attractive women. He puts his hand up. If you step further, Crownling, then you will grow in sight but diminish in view. Understand? A smart man knows his place. I have a simple task for your cell sword, or your sword hand. Nomads outside Karakan have taken to thievery and thuggery. For a handsome Hansel, I, I never heard that word, a handsome Hansel, I need you to annihilate these men who have made my life uncomfortable. This reminds me, we just watched Parasite last night. There's a character in here in that movie who talks like just like this. Watch that movie, by the way. That was awesome. Let's talk about payment. A thousand? Okay, I'll accept it. I think he wants me to go to that location that I might actually not be strong enough to take. I think he wants me to go here, where we discovered last time. Um, they have... We're good at killing thugs. We can kill big groups of thugs. We can even kill... Um, medium, to, like, small sized groups of raiders and thugs mixed. Uh, but those guys, they're not outlaws. What are they called? Are, no, are they outlaws? Is it cutthroats, then outlaws? I believe. It's going to take me a while to remember the nomenclature of everything. I'm not confident that we can take down a large group of outlaws. Especially when they have uh, like slingers and such as backup. So what I'm going to do is, guys, I'm going to take this traveling contract. It's a bit boring. It's, it's going to allow us to travel, though. I talked about how like I wasn't going to do it. But I think this could be good for us as well. 
what it's going to do for us, it's, it's basically paying us to see the world, which might not come up very often. And we're at the exact bottom of the map in a playthrough where the fog of war is turned on. I think that that adds a certain level of value to it that makes this worth it. They're also going to feed us. So that doesn't mean our provisions won't go bad in the meantime. But it does mean we're not digging into the provisions that we are actually still in possession of. Which is great. But it's going to put us in a new location. And as we, we kind of look around, we can see if there is a way. Ooh, some brigands. Okay, this is perfect. This is the type of fight we want. Uh, but what I was going to say, we can see there may be locations for us to discover. That can also earn us some gold as we travel down to discover yet more locations. We'll take these 44s. I mean, if you got a miss, man, make a hit. I still don't have any ammo. But we do have 10 shots left. It was nighttime. I didn't want to wait. We could have camped and bought the ammo. I thought about doing it. I didn't I didn't actually forget this time. I just decided against it. And I'm cool. I'm cool with what we've got going on right now. You know what? I'm not stepping in. You guys step in. I wasted a tiny bit of fatigue there, but I think it's okay. Just pass. So someone told me that the wait turn button has like a, a kind of a hidden initiative penalty. I would love to confirm that. Take him out. So if we know 100% that we're not going to move anymore, we should just uh, completely pass the turn. Because by waiting the turn, we're like burning some of our... Ooh. We'll do this. It makes it worse for Brown. This guy's pretty screwed. He's also... Is he bleeding? No. I had to put him here so that way I could piggyback with Brown. And not get caught in this guy's zone of control. I want to get the kill here because I feel like the AI is just going to take it from me. It took that... It took both the kills. Are you kidding me? Which means I don't get the experience and I, I think I don't get the loot. There is no loot to get, but... Oh, I moved too much. I meant to move like one less space. That's alright. This fight becomes pretty damn lame if they take all the experience for it. Go for the stun. Nailed it. I'm just so used to doing a wait. If that's if that's been made something that I shouldn't use, then I they took three kills. Ah. Thank you. I mean, these guys have decent armor, decent helmets, at least for this stage in the game that I could just throw in my inventory. We got a falchion, which is good, and we also picked up a padded, dented nasal helm, and some of our. I mean, we got our ammunition back, which is good. A little bit of food, a little bit of crowns. We want to be attacked by as many of those guys as possible. Those, like, exact size groups. They're truly perfect for us. And I think his his Fire Lance has been reloaded. Um, the Falchion. Let's compare the Falchion to the... Let's do a couple comparisons. We can even throw the Short Sword in there for comparison there. So I think these two are pretty fair and these two are pretty fair. So with the Short Sword, we've got 30 to 40 damage versus 35 to 40. So the Saif is better. I mean, without a doubt. Whereas the short sword does have a 10% bonus to armor. I think that still puts the Saif ahead, but it, it does narrow it down just a little bit. And then when we get up to the Falchion, which is certainly in a different class altogether. Um, let's see, we see a 35 to 45 versus a 40 to 45. So kind of the same thing there. Except this time, there's no difference in the armor. I feel like they could give this an extra 5% perhaps against armor. In the same way that they balance these a bit more. I could see that. But this does make me want to give the falchion here. He loses a little bit of, um, of fatigue, but that's not a huge issue. This helmet is great. Let's give the, him the padded dental. Or padded dented nasal helmet. That's just way big, big upgrade for him. We don't have to worry about him getting smashed in the head anymore. Anything else? 
I mean, we, we need him to have maximum vision. This is a 125, so that's solid there. And we did level up on Kane, so we're kind of like at that point. I think, guys, I think I'm going to commit to Dagger Mastery. Whether or not I commit to uh, certain types of armor or defensive builds yet remains to be seen. Um, but for now, I'm going to I'm going to go Dagger Mastery. I think that's cool to have a Dagger Master. And in my last series of playthroughs, I think I only had one Dagger guy, and I got him way too late. So let's do it. He just became a hell of a lot scarier as well, which I, I love. So, what are we boosting? If we're going for nimble, we I mean we have to have fatigue no matter what. That's fine. Um, initiative becomes way more important, and I feel like that's something we can boost. HP becomes very important, but his HP is already quite solid. I don't think we need to pump that. But I think it's kind of goofy not to take these threes here. I think that's still the play. Once he gets up to like 85-ish, I could see pulling back on melee skill and trying to guarantee that he has good initiative rolls. I don't know how hard we need to play into initiative, but that was definitely a chance to put 5 in there, so maybe that was worth. Alright, let's keep it rolling. Oh, he's that's right. He is... Um, is it paranoid? I think this is paranoid. They're superstitious as well. You come across a deer skull. At first it means nothing to you, but Oz, the low-key badass, picks it up with earnest. Muted dust pours out of the cavity as he turns it this way and that, hands trembling. He throws the head out of his hands. It clatters hollow against the ground, tumbling over onto where the horn should be. This scared man claims that a soothsayer once told him that he would come across a skull such as this. There are many skulls out there, you argue, but things have a tendency to die, so... Your words do nothing for the man as he slowly and nervously shuffles back into the marching rank. And I thought only children had such silly fears. That'd be like a fortune teller reading your palm or whatever, and they're like, you're going to find love one day. I did that in New Orleans once when I was younger. I did the whole, They have these people on the street who do tarot cards and crystal balls and all that stuff. It's just fun. You're down in the French Quarter. It's a good time. Are there better ways to spend your money? Yes. Yes, there are. Almost any way. Almost any way you could spend your money would be better. Oh, they didn't attack me. I love that there's a mercenary company called the Lords of War. It's like, you mean Warlord? Uh, I prefer my way. All right. We are here. Made a grand. We basically, we made about 200. <laughs> but we found a taxidermist. That's excellent. All right, so this, yes, so this had a lot of uh, good things going for it, and I'm happy to be doing it. Let's see what this contract is. We can do a little bit of stuff up here. Spiders. Okay, this leads me right into something else that I had wanted to talk about today. Let's talk pay. Let's accept. I'll need some time to think about this. I want to camp for a bit. Let's buy some supplies. I mean, we need stuff. All right, Dawn, let's do it. And I don't want to fight them at night either. So... I wanted spider silk and a taxidermist and nets. We have a town down there that's a fishing town that we can make use of in order to... Man, these prices are bad. We'll buy a little bit of stuff here. But I think we'll, we'll hold off and we'll probably move on at some point. Prices to sell are also horrific. After this contract, it might get a little bit better, but I wouldn't expect it to get better by much. Yeah. So the idea is to get the spider silk to get the nets and then to visit a taxidermist like this and to uh I think the food prices are actually fine and to get the reinforced nets which we can then turn around and use in the arena get some of that they're almost the same price and this is just better interesting so we're up to 8 days yeah let's get up to 10 that feels better I'm not going to buy the tools. We don't actually need them yet. Clear a little bit of space with the super cheap stuff. Everything else will hold. And let's accept this contract. Unfortunately, it looks like they're very close. So we're not even going to get a chance to really explore. Nine of them? We should be able to beat nine webnecks. You have to consider also that it's not really nine. By the time they close ranks, it'll be like 12. This could be dangerous, actually. The nest of Webnex is a pit of earth wreathed in white. 
At its rim are thin filaments, which list about at even the slightest suggestion of a breeze. Marching your company inward, the webbing begins to take a sort of civilized shape, as though you were walking in from wintry hinterland, the recency of its creation apparent in its tight trappings. Deer, dogs, man-sized cocoons which show no signs of life, all bound snug in the hangars of white silos and plains, like morsels lost upon a pale rug. What a... man, I love the writing. A black shadow saunters up behind the veiled domicile, coming to the fore with its legs squatting... defilade? Its head crouched beyond them as the foul cretin were grated in its own stride. A human hand sucks in and out from its mandibles like some macabre pacifier. You come to the right place. And guys, if I ever come across a word like I don't know I stumble across, do not fret. There are a couple of you guys who are happy to, to go into the comment section and, and hit me with that definition. I used to go and look them up after, but I always know. Like I say this word, someone there, someone out there knows what this word means. I have a general idea as a man who knows English. Um, but yeah, having the, the definition for me and anyone else out there who doesn't know, I don't mind. If you want to throw that definition out at me in the comment section, I'm good with it. I'm all about increasing my vocabulary. All right, so we're we're boxed in here, which can be good for us, but also could be could be bad. Uh, we're gonna need to take some good angles. High ground here is nice, but this is not like the best position. What I would rather do. All right, I have a, I have a plan. This sucks, but it's part of the plan. This also kind of sucks, but it's part of the plan. I hate that they I'm giving them the high ground, but I think this is right. I had to get out of his zone of control, and I did it without using footwork. So this is it, guys. We've got all four guys on the outside, and then we've got our two ranged killers on the inside. That's the idea. It's very unfortunate, of course, that I'm giving them high ground. I could just keep him here, but that'll allow him to get surrounded. You know what? It's kind of the same either way. I just don't want them to get on Ossimandius, but I'm thinking now maybe I should just let them. I'm not so sure about this one. I feel like I could have left somebody up here. It might be okay to let Ossimandius tank a little bit for us. Just to have the advantage of the high ground. I just hate it because I've kind of wrecked my fatigue just a little bit by jumping up and down these. It's not a huge deal. Is this worth it? Yeah, let's try it like this. Spiders are not scary as long as, and this is a pretty big caveat, you can kill them. If, you, if your first couple turns are just you missing left and right, you're going to have a bad time. Like the ski instructor says on South Park. And you got to get out of webs if you can. You just have to kill them faster. Let's see, 41. We'll go for the, the hits there. Yeah, we get three now. It's so good. Those double misses are kind of rough. And we hit him in his head. That, that sucks also. Alright. I mean... Not a terrible first turn, but it could have gone better. And now they're going to start actually attacking us once we're webbed down. And putting that poison. Yeah, the web makes it easier for them to hit us. But if you can kill them fast enough, and I, I feel like we should have had at least two of them dead this turn. Those two. So this turn we would probably have killed another one. So you see how like the snowball effect against these guys can be pretty brutal. The net, however, we can look at what the actual penalty is. 50% damage. Ugh. And twice as much of their damage ignores armor. It's definitely worth it to get out of it. But we can kill them, and we can kill them quite fast. And if we can break their morale, then we won't have to kill the last couple of them. Okay, where are my best shots? Not down here, I don't have a good angle there. 
We're going to want to attack this one. Nice. Okay, that's great. I mean, that makes my, my life a little easier. The whiff's coming in hot there. Pretty, pretty sad. We're just going to chill. Take advantage of this turn just to get the stuff off me. Brown is having a hard time. I think he still has the injuries. And I really do want to get him a, a something like a sword. We might switch these two out. I think Brown and Stryker need to switch weapons. He needs the, the extra chance to hit. 37 versus 47. I'm a little bit worried about Brown because he's not kind of like handling his own business at this point. Almost. So close. Yeah, he like hasn't landed a single hit. He just needs to get out of his web, I think. And they're going to, you know, we get out of the web. They spend a turn putting us back in it. It's pretty uncomfortable. One of them is near death. Okay. We're just kind of exhausted. Alright, let's break out. We can't move. We got to get out of that. Yeah, I think that's the priority over trying to get one more attack off. Oh, no. He's running, though. To reload our quiver. It's almost better that he's currently netted because it's making him, or webbed, it's making it so that he uh, he can't run. But that poison, will the poison kill him? I don't know. I don't know if the poison will tick all the way down like that. Either way, I don't want these last couple spiders coming in. We'll get out of there. He's down to 1 HP, and he's still poisoned. No, it's over. We're going to make it out with 1 HP. Damn. Oz has been getting the short end of the stick quite a bit recently. Huh. <laughs> Like, almost in every video. The last of the webnecks is dealt with, its legs gating itself as though to eternally clutch at the weapon which had slain it. You nod at the company's good work, then order the whole place torched. Fires rapidly run the length of the webs, breaking bridges of filament apart, and sending fiery doom to their connectors. The whole nest is consumed in the inferno, and somewhere deep in its bedding you hear the shrill cry of spiderlings set alight. I mean, we didn't have to go very far, and that was 670 crowns. Uh, we're going to use a hell of a lot of medical supplies for that. But they give us some roots and berries too, and they no longer have disappearing villagers. Maybe we should take a look at the people. And they have a, yet another contract for us. We're going to take a look at the taxidermist in just a second. The prices are much more reasonable now, so we'll buy some stuff. We're pretty good on food. I don't think we need to buy anything there. Prices to sell have gone up a bit. Not much. But the main thing is, we got Gossamer. We got Gossamer. You know what I'm saying. We got Gossamer. So, we can make those reinforced nets I was alluding to. A Beast Slayer would be pretty sweet on this squad. I love him, but every time I get one, he's got like the worst traits ever. So, I'm kind of like burnt out on, on picking them up. Alright, what do we have here? 
I'm excited to, to see some of this new stuff. I know I'm going to make a Nagzura trophy necklace. But let's see what else I can make. So you can also use these to make... So they're just like dire pelts. You can use them to make uh, war dog armor as well. It's not any different from the other war dog armor. I wish it gave you the armor values. That's something to me that it, it should do. I've looked it up before, but I just don't remember off the top of my head what it was. Plus 15 durability, plus 15 initiative. First taken from ferocious hyenas, cured and sewn together to be worn as a beast hunter's trophy around the neck. Donning the skin of a beast like this bolsters one's drive to action. Well, we're definitely going to make this. It is 200 to make. And, of course, three of the furs. And that's all the furs we have, sadly. But we're also going to come down here and make a Nagzur trophy necklace. So this necla necklace fashioned from trophies taken of various Nagzurs declares the one wearing it a veteran of battles against feral beasts and not easily daunted. So let's craft that. And we have a brother who has pretty low resolve. He's currently afraid. Is that permanent? I hope this goes away. I think this might be temporary. But for right now, he's freaked out. So we're going to give him the necklace just to make sure he doesn't run away. Uh, I would really like to give it to Richter. That's just not, not happening at the moment. We have this hyena fur, and it's like, what do we put it on? I still don't know exactly how this works. These attachments. I think they do add to the, the strength of the harness. But I don't know exactly how much. Like I get that this is better than this. But if I change the attachment on it, what happens? That's what I need to know. Uh, but 15 durability. I think the southern male shirt might be good enough to use this on. As kind of a good early game armor. And it's something that we could then turn around and give to probably Kane. And increase his initiative, which will make him an even better dagger user. Or you could turn around and give it to Richter also. Who, um, whose initiative will be important because at some point we're going to give him Overwhelm. And you, know, you want to go first in order to make Overwhelm good. So these are all the ways I have to kind of think ahead to try and make this stuff work. I don't foresee myself getting tons and tons of good armor in the near future. So I'm okay with using kind of an expensive attachment on sort of a lower tier male shirt. Um, and I think it will make a pretty good kind of light armor outfit, I guess, for um, for archers. I mean, this is this is pretty solid stats for something that you're probably going to use on a brother to... Uh, to keep his, his weight down. Keep his fatigue low so that dodge and nibble can be effective. Okay. So we've gone over all that. Nothing. I'm surprised there's nothing I can make with all these glistening scales. I've got serpent skins. I've got tons of acidic saliva. I probably just don't have enough of certain stuff. We're going to need a lot to fix. I'm, I feel like I need to buy the other stack of tools. And I also feel like I need to buy more medical supplies. So we're going to cut a bit into our supply, into our actual crowns here. But that's fine because we have a lot of money. So we're okay. And it looks like we're going to get another contract here. I was going to say, it, maybe it'll let us travel out of here. Tell him I need some time to think about this. It's called like the Gomsburg or something. Have we already seen that place? We haven't. So this is going to be worth it to us just to travel to a new location, I think. And we also need to repair and we need to heal. So this is fine. We don't want to be here anymore anyway. We've accomplished our mission. We fought some new enemies. And this is also three days away. So man, we're really exploring here. If it walks us through a city, we can click on it as we go through. There we go, just like that. And there's another taxidermist here. So cool. Good to know. And a tavern. Place where we could hire some men if we had money. Some disowned nobles. You can see they have some retired guys. Anything new? Some militia would be good early game pickups if I wasn't trying to keep it real southern. War bows and heavy crossbows. Kind of the name of the game if we could get into that. Marketplace, the prices here are quite good. Anything we can't live without. That's a really cheap padded leather. But I think I'm going to pass. 
Now, they have changed how the tavern works. I think they made it so that it's more often that you'll get some relevant information from the tavern. And I know that there's a camp follower that makes it even better. So, familiar with orcs. Massive beasts and strong as oxen. A mercenary band that called themselves Bernhard's Bears came through and headed south to hunt them down. They never returned, but their leader wore the most impressive armor I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, unfortunately we're on a caravan so we can't go south. Yeah. I mean, where is it? It could be here, it could be here. South is a pretty relative term in this game. Always has been. You meet a monk on the roads, and with him is a donkey-pulled cart. The poor, draught animal carrying its head low in mute exhaustion. Broom straw and veered moss are strung up on one side of the cart, both twisting eagerly in the very winds that drive them. And some pots and pans clatter like rusted wind chimes as the modest wares come to a bumbling stop. A barrel totters on the edge of the cart's bed, and a couple of bees swy, uh, sway to keep up, poking and prodding at its cracks with thirsty curiosity. The monk lifts a wool hat up out of his face, but the lip of it folds back down over his eyes. He takes it off altogether and passes a sleeve across his brow. Carrying a jolly smile, he seems not at all disturbed by the veritable living armory standing before him. Evening, gents. Don't suppose you're the kind to march beneath a lord's banner. You look like sail swords to me. What is it you carry? Aye, I was thinking you'd ask. This here is Bessie, a cow's name for a donkey's ears. <laughs> Don't worry, she won't kick you. She's all hauled out, see? What she carry? Well, that's beer. From men yonder, so that they may drink to men above. If you don't mind, or if you don't mind my business, I'd like to get on where I'd be going. The monk pulls up the reins of his jenny as he readies to start moving. How many crowns? You hold your hand up, stopping the monk before he can get going again. He sighs, slowly lowering the reins out of his hand. Feeling as though you may be getting the wrong impression, you quickly ask if maybe he has beer to spare for your men. You are more than willing to pay. The monk looks back at his stock for a moment, then turns around. Aye, I give your men a sip for a crown or two. Don't mind the bees round the top. They'll scurry when you come. But if you scurry when they scurry, they'll scurry after you. Strange little gits. That is how bees work. You ask the man how much he wants. I'd wager ten crowns a head will do. I'm no businessman, though. I might be taking advantage of myself here. Hell yeah, sixty crowns. You agree to pay the man what he's asked for, and he opens his arm in invitation. Your men pop the lid off the cask and dip their cups in. They come to sit in the shade, sipping tankards and exchanging beers. The monks bids you a farewell, and the men all lift their cups to him in a loud, increasingly slurred cheer. So even if our guys were in good shape, I still would have done this, because I love the idea of hooking my guys up with a little bit of relaxation. Alright, Elk's Horn, yet another place for us to stop in. Get the lay of the land, see what's good. We could have bought some wood at one of those last towns. I the original last town where we took this contract and maybe had a chance to sell it. More hunters. Hmm. Hunters are so good, y'all. It's so it's so hard for me not to to want to try and pick them up. I saw barbarians. Okay. We can beat thralls. We can beat thralls all day long. The war dogs might be more dangerous than them. Ooh, forgot to check on Oz. Let's support him as heavily as we can. Anyone steps to Oz, they're going to get beaten down in these two tiles. Let's jump in. Good. Those war dogs, believe it or not, can be quite a hassle. I knew we could get the kill, otherwise I might have tried to do something fancy with the high ground. And I maybe should have rotated Oz with Brown. But if they're going to go for the caravan hands, that's fine. Okay, a little three-man surround there. I'm going up here. There's no way I want to let him uh, do anything to Oz. And I may actually just keep him back. We'll just wait. They've got throwing weapons out so we can ignore their zone of control. Hmm. Am I being too scared? Let's keep him near the action. 
And if we need him, he can jump in for like a finishing blow or something. This is obviously like tactics I'd be using on a much more difficult opponent. But it's good to play even against the weak guys like you might against the stronger ones. You'll play more consistently like that. Like you won't forget to do the little things sometimes that can make or break a fight. Like I could just be like, ah, I'm just going to run him to the other corner of the map or I'm not going to do anything with him at all. Instead, I understand that the capabilities of these men is such that having him close by, there's no, there's really no danger of him getting hurt. So I might as well have him there just in case. And for our trouble, I mean, the food's not that relevant. The money and the bead necklace are nice. And we're going to get more than our ammo back. Some extra tools as well. We didn't really take any hits. Yeah, just give me more and more of those fights. That's all helping to pay for this very long trip. And of course, experience. You don't ever want to go a day without getting experience. So, okay, this is something... Let me do this while I'm thinking about it. So because Striker's melee skill is so high, he doesn't need the bonus 10% that the uh, the attack like Slash gives. And I think that's a good, that's a good change. Uh, it does mean, however, that we're probably not synergizing as strongly. Let's do this. Maybe something like this for now. I would like to do this, but he's so hurt. This will feel a lot better once he's less hurt. And we have an actual, like, real front line. This is kind of okay. This is sort of what I'm going for. Alright, let's go to Ozymandias. Let's level him up. Um, He is going to take Brawny. His fatigue is pretty pitiful. We're hoping for big rolls on that here. And we got him. Um, I'm also going to take a 4 here in hit points. Uh, I'm not that worried about making him a permanent standard bear. I don't think that's going to be his role. He's just pretty okay at it for right now. I would much rather give him better like melee skill and melee defense. Here, because this is a 2, if this is a 3, I would just take it. Uh, but I think this is a decent chance to give him slightly better melee defense. Maybe get that up to 20 and then kind of stop. With Striker, though, I am pretty much positive that he is going to be a heavy bro. So he is going to get... Let me just make sure his... Yeah, he failed. Rerolls failed morale checks. We're going to get him Battle Forged, which isn't insane because his armor's pretty light right now. Um, but he's before we know it, he'll be in some heavy armor, and that'll be great. Hmm. Let's take this four. That might be the best range defense roll we're going to get. So, I mean, it is. So let's take advantage of it now. Get him over that 10 threshold that I kind of like I'm more comfortable with. 13 is fine for a dude who uses a shield and a pretty decent one at that. And then, you know, when we get the chance to get more melee defense again, we'll take it. I like my characters to be well-rounded. Um, I find, especially in a campaign where I can only have 12 men, going hyper-specialist is not that viable. Um, you can make a brother who's, like, super light-armored, only uses daggers, right? That brother will probably suck if you're fighting, like, the Ancient Dead or super... Like, there's, super, there's certain matchups where he's going to suck. And that may be, like, a series of bad examples. But I think you, you kind of generally get the idea I'm going for. My my thing is to always have... And I missed clicking on it, and I tried. Um, my thing is to always have brothers who are good in every fight. And that's not a big deal if you're playing a run where you have a chance to have, like, 16 bros in your one company. But in a run where every brother has to be good every fight, you can't really afford to have specialists. So, of course, we're not going to be able to get uh, missions here. But there is a training hall, which is kind of cool. Witch hunters are pretty good backgrounds. There are more beast slayers. Can't afford any of these guys. They have a hedge knight here. These, these gentlemen are always quite expensive. Ooh, the famed loot. Dignified engraved Nordic helmet. That's pretty insane stats. 318 on a headpiece is nuts. That's like, that would be legit for heavy armor on the body. That's like a coat of plates just sitting on your head. <laughs> just wrapped around. Um, they have some attachments here we could kind of mess around with, but we just don't have a lot of brothers yet. We don't have a lot of armor. The prices here to sell are fine. We can get rid of some junk. I'm kind of interested in getting rid of uh, this necklace here. 
I don't want to grow. Ooh, ooh, wow. I've never seen a famed whip. If I could buy this right now, I would use this for the rest of our Let's Play. The Lightning. A whip is quite the peculiar weapon, but this piece has been crafted by a true master. It is more durable and balanced than any other you've seen. It's kind of the generic background given. It's six grand. I never see this cool stuff in the late game whenever I have all the gold I need to buy it. I'll never see it again. Damn it. I'm curious how much better its stats are. 40, 50, so it's got better durability. Its damage is 18 to 37. So, that's 10 more damage overall. And then we've got a standard 10 and 25%. So it's better versus armor by another 11%. But that's, that's it. That's a good whip. I mean, that's a great whip. But it's, I don't know if it's, I mean, it's awesome. I'm just going to say it's awesome. But this is what I was looking at. The Vulture's Edge. I love pole arms. Um, whenever I play like RPGs and stuff, I'm either like the tank paladin healer guy, sword and board, or I want to have a pole arm like this. That's that's what I like. Like Guan Yu, straight up Dynasty Warriors. A long pole attached to a sharp and finely balanced curved blade used to deliver deep sweeping strikes over some distance. Um, what could I compare this to that would give me a better frame of reference? Bill hooks. I mean, it's obviously they're both pole arms, two-handed pole arms. Um, it's got very low durability, which is sort of interesting. Very high damage. Doesn't have any bonus to hit head. Not super effective versus armor, but it does ignore a bit of armor. I love it. If I could get that, I would probably give it to Striker, and that would just be his like go-to. Damn, I hate even looking at it because I know I can't afford it. Anyway, we're good to go. We're good to travel. Let me just see if they have any really cheap ammo. They do not. But they do have a war dog. We could consider picking up our first war dog. They also have a cheap bill hook. They have two cheap bill hooks. And a cheap military cleaver. Oh my god. They have a lot of cheap stuff, guys. But any of it, if we bought, we can only afford one piece. The bill hook is obviously like a kind of a game changer. I've heard that they are made a little bit worse. However, I'm trying to remember exactly how. They are worse against armor, I think someone said in the comment section. But to get a bill hook for the same price that you would buy a pike, that's a good deal. And a military cleaver is a tier 3 one-handed cleaver. I mean, that's big. That's a huge upgrade over... Some of the junk we have, and it's only 800. It's making me want to sell some of these crafting ingredients. Like, I could probably get rid of... Oh, man. These are not the best prices to sell either, which is kind of killing me. Um, I'm going to sell this and this. I don't need it. I am going to sell the wooden shield because this is also worth 100. Um, I am going to sell the crappy sling because we'll probably slaughter so many of those dudes in time that we know we're not going to need it. Get the acidic saliva. I'm going to sell all of these. We've made our one necklace. I don't know when the next time we're going to get a chance to do it is. Hmm. I think this is the play, guys. As much as I would also like to get some basic male shirts. At, at a discount. This is a tier 3 weapon. For less than half price. So we, I, I feel compelled. To do this. Let's get that. Our frontliners will thank us. This doesn't. Does this have a bonus to hit? It doesn't. Okay. So, hmm, who's gonna use it? Kind of the question, right? Someone's got to use it. It's just. I mean, it's better than the scimitar. There's no doubt. The scimitar makes like a decent backup weapon. Could maybe give to Ozymandias for now. But it's not, it's not a waste no matter what. Because we're only rocking six guys. Uh, very soon we're going to no doubt pick up another person. In which case we'll be happy to have a weapon like that. I'm tempted to sell like this. I'm probably not going to get a chance to make multiple um, reinforced nets. Also that's pretty expensive. That's kind of a big investment. Just to try and win a single uh, arena. And I want this dog also. But we'll, we'll get more dogs. 
For right now, though, I think we head back to that place that we discovered. With every battle your sellswords fight, the renown of the company grows. As this fame rises, more people, and not just sellswords, will be looking to join the Glorious Three. Perhaps it is time the company takes on another follower. So we've unlocked, we must have passed 750, because now we can hire another follower. So the one that I was the most interested in was the scavenger. The sooner you get this, the sooner he can start like generating value. And the negotiator also is probably pretty good. But look where we are, guys. We're in a whole other world. There's a road that forks this way, and I think that's where we're going to go. We're going to try and pick up a contract from here. And then if there's no contract here, we'll, we'll explore down that way. There is a contract. Good. And we do want to stop at every place that we find because it's, it's part of... I don't know if it's still an ambition quite, but it's a requirement in order for us to unlock one of the other followers. Just checking to see what they have. You'll learn what kind of items can pop up in the game by finding famed items. Horrible beasts. Okay, I'm good at horrible beasts. It's a small contract, but maybe we kill some dire wolves. Maybe we get some pelts. There is value to be had. Get back on the road. Okay, they're winding. I would prefer not to fight spiders in the dark in the woods again. But I'd be willing to bet this is Naxxers or Dire Wolves. Wow, they're really leading me. Okay, four Dire Wolves. No, no problem. But the amount that we pay in a single day is about what we're going to make from this contract. So they just led us on quite the, the goose chase. Alright. These are not frenzy dire wolves. You'll notice because they'll have like a uh, foam coming out of their mouths. Those ones are very dangerous. They apply overwhelm and they attack a lot. And their initiative is just always going to be better than yours. Alright, we're not going to step up. We're going to let them come to us this turn. If they have to step in, they can't attack three times. Like that. He had to step in once so he could attack twice. He had to step in twice so he could only attack once. That's the type of stuff like I'm thinking about whenever I'm thinking about movement. Like, I'm a dummy, guys, but I'm not a stupid dummy. If we go for him with the banner, we have a worse chance to hit. Nice. We got him. And the bleed that's caused... For those of you... Uh, you know, I always kind of talk as if I'm talking to someone who knows what I'm talking about. So I try to, like, remember that some of the basics, perhaps, of this game are not known to all of you. Um, the cleaver also has an on-hit effect that causes bleed. So in addition to the fact that its straight-up stats were better than the sword that we were using, the scimitar, it also has... The bleed that it causes, which isn't great versus... Ooh, with two pelts. That's nice. And an adrenaline gland. Uh, in addition to the... The bleed effect... What else was I was trying to say? The bleed effect sucks versus undead. It does. But against living targets and beasts, it's very good. And we'll be happy to have it. Alright, thank you. Let's see what our renown actually is now. That's not, nope, not what I wanted. Campfire, nope, not what I wanted. Actually, it is under campfire now. That's good. 798. So the next one, that's 1400, 2250. Yeah, so we unlock our next one at 1400. And then to get a better donkey, we need five grand. How much do we currently carry? Is it still... Okay, 90. Not bad. So, yeah, 90 is a pretty good amount. But this is a good time to explore for us. We could go keep going north. There's a road that leads that way. Uh, but I'd rather head back down to the south in the world of the arenas. We know there's bad dudes over there. Is this a road? I thought there was a road that went that way, but maybe there isn't. Am I just walking in the middle of nothing? I would rather go places where I could get contracts. So I'm willing to take a bit of a... Uh, deviant 
path here. No, that's Honor Guard. Yeah, I have a feeling we're a bit out in the wild here. And I heard the chichink sound, so we did get some uh, some cash from discovering that location. That's our cartographer at work. And some small footprints here. Six dire wolves, we can fight them. But it looks like they attacked us. So we're going to be scattered. This is pretty bad. And they locked us down instantly. Ooh, that's not good. We don't have quick hands yet. Alright, that's good though. And we're going to come over here to support. Step in here. And we're okay. Nice, and we landed that. We've already got two of them running. This was what was kind of amazing. They lined them both up for me. I could have pulled him back here, but I decided to leave him. He's got full armor, full HP. It's really just Richter that I was scared about, but he's only really in front of one uh, dire wolf, so I don't have to be that worried. Kill that, step in here. Nice. I really just have to kill this guy to, to get him out of the way. He's going to bleed. Oh, wow. He's probably going to die to his bleed, though, right? I think I had two stacks on him. Or can, or can you not die to bleed anymore? I think that might be the case. I think that was a change I read. And it's a good... If, if that's correct. That's a good change. I actually like that. Yeah, we cut an artery and we cause bleeding. That weapon is insane, y'all. I think people kind of sleep on the military cleaver. And they shouldn't because it's a solid... Yeah, he died. He didn't make it to the edge. So maybe the enemies can still die from bleed and we can't? Or maybe... I know I read when we were talking about nine lives. You come back and those, like, bleed would be removed. That way you wouldn't just instantly, like, respawn and then die again. Alright, another location. We could probably take this if we were in great shape. We got a level on Richter. We should we should pump that. He is going to be a bow user for sure. So let's just go ahead and give him bow mastery. That'll give him one extra range. And it'll cause less fatigue buildup, which is great. We're of course going to take a four in his range skill. Um, I'm going to take this four in his hit points. And then we're going to call it good at that. And then I'll probably also... To me, this is sort of debatable because I want to get him to at least 40. I mean, his resolve is pitiful. Uh, but he needs some more fatigue as of right now to be kind of a steady archer. Um, do I go into here? Hmm. Let me check my equipment real quick. How beat up are we? A little beat up. Hmm. This is a tough call. I mean, it would be good to get the experience. It would be good to get the money. Um, we could probably snipe out the raiders. Or snipe out the thugs. Let's save it, actually. Let's save it. And then we'll try it. It, it also looks to be a fight on the swamp. So, if we're the only one with ranged tools, it can come to our favor. But it didn't work out that way. They, uh, they're they pretty much on solid ground. And in order to avoid what I've been told are the penalties of using wait turn, we're going to shoot first instead of allowing them to jump closer, which is going to lower my, you know, percentage chance to hit. But yeah, these, these thugs here, we get rid of them and there's really nothing left. You're just facing down a few, just two raiders. I'm going to step in. I'm not going to miss a chance to get a stun on the first turn. Um, I'm also going to step up here. We'll leave you there. See, I should have just passed. Because I can lock this whole corner down. Okay. I think this is good. Okay. Okay. Quality miss, as I like to refer to them. I'm just trying to protect our more vulnerable bros. 
So I'm playing a little differently than I normally would. If everyone was in good shape and everyone was kind of a great, strong brother, you'd see me moving a little bit differently. Wow, good shield, man. Go for the dude who doesn't have his shield wall up. Don't like that. Let's um move close. Shoot this dude point blank. Nuked. Perfect. Even getting them to run is perfect. We're going to bring him up here. Killing it, guys. I'm glad we took this fight. It, it looked a little bit on paper like it might be a bigger group. Turned out not to be the case, of course. But this was if I if I had known the exact makeup ahead of time, um, I would have been more confident taking the fight. Got a three man surround. Okay. I mean if we get out of this fight and that was the worst hit we took. I mean he's killing it with the blocks though. Jump in. Down you go, sir. Two levels for our trouble. I mean, that's why we do it, right? We got Amber Shards and 100 crowns. So we're looking at maybe about 400 crowns for that fight. Half a stack of tools, that's about another 100. Some junk we can't really use. The Morning Star is a solid weapon, though. That's another, that's another stunner. I'm pretty sure, right? You can't stun with the Morning Star. Let me check. It's been a hot second. Let me just, let me check that out. And we can compare it to the uh, Heavy Southern Mace as well. So yeah, his abilities stay exactly the same. So let's check the stats. 30 to 45. 35 to 50. So just right there. It has 20% more effectiveness versus armor. Yeah, the Heavy Southern Mace is just a better weapon. But this is still quite a good weapon. We'll hold on to that. We're not going to sell that one right away. That's That has synergy. That's a good weapon. It's an expensive weapon. Uh, and we'll keep it. But going through the wild, right, we were worried about not making any money, but we discovered two locations and got paid. So, going up on the mountains is something we should do whenever we get the chance. Uh, okay. I would fight them. I will fight them. But we should save the game here because this is a situation where they're, they're chasing me. This might be the last fight of the day also. So I saw they're coming from here, which may mean that there is a quote-unquote southern location here. I was going to head down here and see if we could find that unique armor, but that was kind of wishful thinking. Um, but there may be orcs here. This is a fight that we can win, but it it could also be brutal. And we want to level up before we do that. Brown, 100%, is a battle forge, bro. He's going to get heavy metal at some point. His melee skill rolls suck. We just need to take him. It's do or die for him a little bit. Uh, here, though, Oz, I would like... Okay, he got good good rolls there. Four here. And I'll take a four in range defense. He doesn't need it to be huge, but if I can get him the ten, that would be nice. I don't know if I want to get him the firearm mastery yet. Spear Mastery would be interesting. Because I see someone mentioned a build where you just give him bags and belts and you just fill them up with Fire Lancers that you rotate with quick hands. Hmm. Anything else I could do with him? Anything interesting? He's got rotation. He needs footwork. There's something that I want on every brother. Uh, he could also stand to be a shield expert. I'm going to go for footwork for now. And hopefully that'll that'll give him the ability to get out of some tight spots. I think this is just happening. So we need to, need to just get over it. I'm going to run. I kind of don't want to take this fight, guys. A single hit from a Berserker ends games. And there's not that much we can get from them. I think they added stuff like uh, treasure from orcs. But that's... That's a high risk, low reward battle for us. I was I was gonna take it and then I thought about it and I was like, yeah. 
this is a brigand leader. But many brigand raiders were just not there yet. All right, we need more men in our company. But it's good to know that these places are here because there's going to be a time where we're just going to run through all this stuff. And now we know it's there. We can just go boom, 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 boom in a line in one like episode and take out everything we want. Okay, we have to cross this swamp. And with this exploring, you never know. We might find the witch's hut. We might I mean there's all sorts of stuff we could find. Could this be it? It's just young, guys. We can take this. It's on a hill, too. Let's save let's save the game now, because we're we're past the the trash. I meant I totally messed up my saves, by the way. Well, let's do this fight. And that's going to be it for today, once we're done with this. Five Orc Young we can beat. We're going to have to wait. Jump in. They've got a pot here. They were cooking some people. It says you don't want to know what's in here. And supplies to feed them. Um, I'm not that interested in blocking them in. They're going to use their Orc Charge. Which I'm okay with. I don't think Shield Wall does anything to prevent it. Alright, I mean, he was the front orc. He had a shield. We're just waiting. Alright, scream in. That hurt. We took 80 damage on that. Damn. Four shots in a row. Not landed. The stun is gonna hurt. We can take this fight, though. I know we can. Good damage. Use the spear until we get a chance to line him up. Yeah, he's going to die to his bleed. God, Kane is in trouble. Damn. I think we reload that. We need to try, we need to try and jump in on them instead of letting them jump in on us. I could have been a little more proactive there, and I think that's something I needed to learn. I don't, I, I have a defensive, oh wow. I have a defensive play style, but that doesn't, that definitely means you have to be flexible when you have a defensive play style. You can't just stay defensive all the time. Sometimes it is the right move, especially against orcs. Like this, to step in and boom. You know, I get the first attack. They're not going to land the stun hit. I could jump in there. Let's do it. I think Striker can handle it. I could move in here. I just don't know if Oz can hold the flank like I want him to. And then what I would do is step in with Brown, and I would also probably step in with Ozymandias and just use him to hit people that were two steps away. Or I can step in and go for the hit, which is what I did. Okay, we hit a 34. Can't be mad at it. And the main thing is that we're not getting charged. We could still get charged by this guy. He could come in like here and then charge. He could come out on the other flank, obviously, and do the same thing. Alright, now I'm a bit worried for Striker. Because he's stunned, he can't shield wall. I thought, I had a feeling for sure that they were going to go south, and they didn't. And if I can't kill these guys fast enough, we're going to pay for that mistake. Okay, we've he's lost the zone of control, so we can send Kane up. He already kind of wants to run. We're going to shield wall and stun. Wow, he knocked me out of my shield wall into a charge. That's a good that's a damn good move from the AI. Didn't do any damage though, so I'm still happy. We'll step in here, and now we've got 
line of sight on two guys. Take the kill because it'll freak them out. It also pushed kind of the unforeseen consequence. It pushed uh, through to the back line, and now they're on my archer. And this is where rotation and stuff really comes in. Come on, shield. For those of you who don't know, orc weapons are huge. They do obscene damage. But your human characters can't really use them. Because they have fatigue penalties to their use. Go for him. He didn't have any armor, but we hit him in the head. And now we've got surrounds, so we have better odds of hitting. Which should lead to some dead orcs. Alright, you got me. I'd have really liked to not get stunned there. And there's no law that says we have to use our fire lance every battle. Damn, it wasn't this location. That would have been cool, though. These are worth quite a bit to sell, all of these. Um, this is enough armor, or tools rather, to repair our armor. And then, of course, the signet ring to sell. Nice, lucrative, good fight. Um, no levels gained. Um, but we have enough tools that we can afford to repair this stuff. It's all good to sell. And I think we can even afford... What I'm looking to do now is kind of sweep this way. And once we get to Wadehoff, uh, I'll be comfortable to uh, call it for today. I think I've been recording for quite a while. Yeah, waiting for daytime. It's, this is actually timed perfect. That's a good That's a good band for us to fight, I think. I wanted to get to this mountain at daytime. That way I could scout a little bit. But I do not really want to take this fight. I think they're coming for me, guys. So that will be the beginning of the next episode. And once we do that, I, if we do this fight, I don't know what my incentive really is to come here down to wait off. I think I would instead go to uh, Cracktoll. And then try and find my way further south with this road. Because I think it will lead me straight to another um, city-state. Which is what I really want to do. But we're probably going to have to take this brigand fight next time when we come back. It's been a great episode, y'all. We fought some new enemies for our company. We've gotten some levels. And uh, we've saved some money. We've seen the world. Yeah, it's a good time. Thank y'all so much for watching, y'all. As always, my name is Brett. Channel's Good Talk Gaming. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.